Hey, honors physics students and parents. As we begin this year, I thought it might be helpful for you to have a few hints about how to solve the textbook problems that you'll be given this year. Every time we have a new unit, since you have a textbook and it's a very useful textbook, uh, you will be assigned a number of text problems to solve. And so I want to give you some strategies for attacking those problems. So randomly I chose number 100 from chapter 3 and will be in chapter 3 uh, relatively soon in the year. Let me tell, uh, show you what number 100 is. If you look in your textbook, you'll see number 100 says this. And you throw a ball downward from a window at a speed of 2.0 meter per second. How fast will it be moving when it hits the sidewalk 2.5 meters below? Well, as you solve this, look for strategies. If you don't know how to solve it, there are a couple things you can do, and I really hope you will utilize this. So when you go back and say, okay, I know what section that was from, so when you go backwards in the textbook and, and check this out, many times they will have, in this circumstance, um, an example of how to solve the problems sitting right there in front of you. And so if you look there and say, oh, this is how you solve it, and that's very useful, Here's another one that's really awesome with our textbook. One of the reasons I chose this textbook, as you see here, it has practice problems. Now, these are practice problems that are similar to what you'll have in the textbook problems. As you see the practice problem and you look at it and say, well, how do I know how to solve it based on the practice problems? This is really powerful. You read this practice problem and say, okay, I don't know how to start it. Then look in the very back of the book, in the very back of the book, they have a section in the appendices. In that section, in the appendices, it says solutions for practice problems. It doesn't just give the answer. As you can see here, it shows how to solve practice problems. It shows the steps you use and how to get the answer. This is very powerful, and it's expected that you will actually utilize this technique. So if we go back again to, uh, to problem number 100 and, and look at this, and let's say we've, we've looked at some similar kind of problems. One thing we've done in class, and I will have this available all year, is I have a set of formulas. So if you look at the set of formulas here, um, this will be available to you at all time. One of the strategies I've mentioned in class, or I will mention soon, is that when you see a bunch of formulas, the best way to solve or problem solve is to make a list of the things you know and the things you don't know. So for instance, in number 100, uh, they do say that it had a beginning velocity of 2.0 meter per second. So you write that as V1 equals 2.0 meter per second. Uh, in class we talk about, in the textbook talks about the acceleration of a falling object is 9.8 meter per second squared. And then we do know also that the distance it travels or the displacement is 2.5 meters. Then they have a question. I believe this is the most important part. They ask how fast will it be moving? We call that V2 and we write question mark. All you have to do from your formula list is find the one formula that has V1, A, D, and V2. You will discover that is right here. So you write down exactly what you see here. And you would write down the formula from the formula sheet. V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2A, D. And then, right below this, you substitute. Now remember, on your paper, use plenty of room. Don't try to use the minimum amount of paper. So you do V2 squared equals V1 squared, which you would write 2.0 meter per second squared, plus 2 times the acceleration of 9.8 meter per second squared, times the distance it travels, or displacement, 2.5 meters. And then, it, certainly from here, it's OK to show me a step or two and get an answer. So the answer to this is a V2 equals 7.3 meters per second, and it's all very good. Now, when I grade these, here's what I will do. First of all, I will grade on an assignment the following. I will grade, at my choosing, three problems. Two of the three will be graded um, for four points. So since this is right, if you did this and showed your steps, I would give you four out of four. But let's say that instead of getting 7.3 meters per second, you did some things wrong. You, you tried it and you made an error, and instead you got a V2 of 3.1 meter per second, something that was wrong, okay? Now, this is a wrong answer, but still, I want to give you very much credit for actually trying the problem. 
And if you show your work and really try it, I will give you three out of four for just trying it, even if you mess it up, okay? So, but what if, instead of all of this, all you do is you write down number 100 and you write 7.3 meters per second, okay? So that's the right answer. However, you will get zero out of four for that. So, understand, you must show your steps for these problems to get credit. And if you show your steps and you make a little mistake, or even a big mistake, it's three out of four. But if, regardless of if it's right or wrong, if you just give me the answer, then you will get zero out of four. So, every assignment will be worth ten points. One of the problems will be four out of four. Another problem will be four out of four. And again, you can get three out of four for trying. A third problem that's typically one of the harder ones will be two out of, um, will be worth two points. So for instance, let's say there's another problem. Let's say this one was one of those. It doesn't matter whether you got it right or wrong. I will give you two out of two if you legitimately tried the problem. So let me tell you right now what happens is that on every text assignment, the worst grade you ought to get if you tried the problems is eight out of 10 but very likely you'll get nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 on a lot of these assignments. And again, you will be practicing very effectively. Now, of course, um, there are a couple of other strategies. Come in for extra help and that would be very useful. I will be producing YouTube hints about how to start some of the problems. So by the end of uh, uh, using all these resources, you should be very successful and getting help on text assignments. Thanks.